Um, hi everyone, welcome to this session, uh, a core conversation about multimedia uh, asset management in core. Um, this is supposed to be a conversation, which means that it should be bi-directional. And um, I would ask you if you have questions or comments to go to that mic and speak there because they are recording this and to be able to, people that will be watching you this recording to be able to hear you, you need to do that. Um, my name is Yanis. Um, I uh, am a senior engineer and team lead at MZ Systems. Um, I've been active member of the Drupal community since 2009. Um, I say active because I've been using Drupal even a bit earlier than that, but got actively involved a bit later. Um, and if I would have to do it again, I would become active at the beginning. Um, I'm one of the leads of D8 Media Initiative. Uh, it's the initiative that has been focusing on improving media and contrib for Drupal 8. Um, now we started some discussions about which parts could be moved in core and how and why. Um, and uh, I used to work for examiner.com, which used to be a huge media site. Uh, it was one of the first Drupal 7 websites. It was the biggest in terms of traffic for a long time. And this is basically where my interest in media began. And I was also able to, to work in this area um, because I was working there. Unfortunately, site is not online anymore. It died this July, um, but it gave a lot, of to, a lot of things to me and the Drupal community. Um, I didn't have any recent enough photo with my new look, so, and Drupal is about a community, and these are my Drupal friends, so I decided to use this photo. Um, as I said, I work for a company called MD Systems. Uh, it's a Swiss web shop from Zurich. Our CTO is Sasha. Uh, he's one of the top five D8 contributors. Uh, we are D8 experts. We've been working with D8 for years now, basically, um, rolling out D8 websites for how much time, Sasha? More than a year, I guess, it's fair to say. Um, yeah. A lot of media sites, um, we are... Uh, one of the partners involved with uh, MP8 distribution. This is a D8 distribution for enterprise media websites. Um, and we try to give back 20% of every project to the community. Uh, that's why you also probably heard that we are one of the biggest contributors um, to the community, and uh, especially if you consider the size of the company, because we're quite small. Um, so, what are we going to talk about today? Um, I will briefly explain what we see is what our users want from media in Drupal. We will see what we currently have in core, we will see what we currently have in contrib, um, and then I will explain my proposal for improvements in core um, and how to achieve that, and then we should have a conversation about it. I'm hoping to hear a lot of ideas from you, too. Um, so this whole journey, basic, for me, it basically started three years ago at RubyCon Prague, where I had a core conversation about media in Drupal 8, <laughs> which sounds very similar to this one. But it was much more early stage than it is now. And before that core conversation, uh, I I did a survey and asked people what they expect, what they want, what are the features that they most urgently need in Drupal related to media. And these were the results, like media library, where you can browse all your media that is on your site and search uh, through it, um, that you are able to reuse your assets. Um, that you can use local assets like images and documents, um, and that you can also equivalently use remote media. Uh, so local, 
In this terminology is something that you host on your web server, so it's not actually local because it's not usually not hosted from your local computer. While remote is something that is hosted by a third party usually, like like a YouTube video or or a Flickr image or a slide share slides or something like that. Um, it doesn't physically live on, on the servers where your Drupal website lives, but you probably want to use this content in context of your site, which also means that you need to support the editorial process around them. Then, WYSIWYG embedding of media assets and cropping also came up. There were a few other things, but these items were probably the ones that almost everybody in the survey mentioned. And now, three years, three years later, um, after talking to many people, after many discussions and issue queues and events and so on, it seems that these are still the most important. Like, maybe priorities change a little bit, but like, if we solve this, we've done quite a good job for the beginning. Um, so, what we have in core right now, we're able to host local images, files, documents. Um, we also added a multi-upload in D8, which wasn't there in D7. It's not entirely obvious. You can basically select more files when you click on this browse button, or you can drag and drop more files to this little element. Um, as I said, it works. It will upload them, all of them at once, and um, they will all appear in this table but it's not obvious. It's not the usual like huge area where it says draw, drag your files here to upload them or something like that. Um, so this improved a little bit, but the user experience is probably not the best. Then uh, we have this files listing, like very, very basic media library, but I would argue that this is not a media library. Um, and Backstory of this listing is we were pretty late in D8 cycle already and we didn't improve much of media and we got views in core. And we said we could at least build a view that lists all your files. So you have at least some kind of insight into that. You don't agree? <laughs> um, and we built that view. This was something that was possible at that time um, and we needed to use what views defied find by default. Um, then we have embedding. We can embed images into WYSIWYG in pure core itself. Uh, it supports aligning and captions, um, and it works very good. Um, so this is one of the probably best improvements for D8. Um, but it's also, it's also limited just to images. You cannot embed a video, for example. Uh, and um, this is also one of the examples where uh, core set standard, and then Contrib was able to follow this standard, which is very important because I believe if, if, if core creates standards for us, and we don't have to invent these very low level parts in Contrib, we, are, we end up with much cleaner and much less fragmented ecosystem. Because if Contrib starts to inventing very low level stuff, you, you get different solutions. That start competing and then for site builders or end users is confusing because they don't know which solutions to take and which one is better and what that means in long term, etc. Here, basically, Core set the standard how this embedded thing is stored in that body field. And we use this more or less the same approach in Contrib to extend this functionality to be able to embed much more than just images. And it's kind of, and because we use the same approach, caption works in a similar way and aligning works in a similar way, we are able to rely on core to do that. So I think that this is very important. Um, then we have usage tracking. It's something that when, you dis when we discuss media, it's often completely forgotten about. But the fact that we are tracking usage and 
I don't think that some of our compet competitors do that. Like, I might be wrong because I'm not following all the processes in all areas. But this is something that is hidden underneath the hood, and it's very important for consistency of, consistency of your content. Um, and this has been in Drupal forever, but I just wanted to say that there are things in core that are good, and maybe we forget about them a lot of times. So if we see which of the most imp important use cases we cover by core is uploading and using local media assets and WYSIWYG embedding. Um, I intentionally didn't cross the media library because, as I said, I don't see that listing as a media library. But argue with me, please, if you want. Um, and of course, um, there is a lot of work going on in Contrib. Um, we've been working on this for two years now, actively. And the first thing is support for remote media. Um, this is the media library from what is now becoming media module for D8. Uh, it was a Summer of Code project by Vijay, who is standing there at the back. Um, it was initially developed on GitHub, but just recently, in the last days, we pushed it to Drupal.org. It's not finished yet, but we have a dev release on Drupal.org, so it's easier to find. Um, and yeah, in this library, you can have local, so-called local media, which are the blue boxes, and remote media, which are the red boxes. Um, so we can support remote media and contrib. Then something that is very important when you start dealing with remote media is how you handle metadata. Um, usually, like let's take an example of a YouTube video. On YouTube, you don't have just a video. You have title and tags and description and maybe thumbnails that YouTube can provide for you. And in the past, it was really, really hard to use this information in Drupal in a standardized way. Of course, you could like code a custom module that would connect you with YouTube, and then you would be able to get that, that, this data. But as far as I know, there was no standardized way of connecting to many different services and exposing in information that these services provide um, to your Drupal site. In contrary, we have this now. Um, we through, through the plugin system, um, every, every remote or even local media type can say, these are the fields that I have available for you. And these are the fields that a tweet plugin makes available for you. And then you can access those fields in th this data in a very standardized manner. Like it, it, your developer experience is the same for every type that you are accessing. And there is also ability for you to define mapping. And when this item is saved, fields will be automatically populated. So in this case, we saved the tweet. We referenced it with the URL only. And then on the save, because of this mapping, other fields were stored as part of your entity. So you have access to the tweet author or tweet ID if you need it for any reason or retweet count. Um, so, and it works the same way for every type. Then, we have libraries. First library that we saw is the one from media module. Um, and because core doesn't provide any, any, any guidance here, uh, we already have a few different implementations of media library in core, in contrib for D8. This is, for example, the file entity browser module, which uses masonry library. Um, to, to, to do this grid. Um, and it looks nice, but oh, if we go back, it looks completely different than this one. Um, and this is the area where I think Core could do a lot to standardize things. And then, like let's say we have a library in Core that supports just images, for example, but sets visual standards. 
then modules in Contrib that provide support for different asset types, like videos or, or slides or whatever, can follow that visual standard and represent their items in, with the same look and feel, if that makes sense. And this way we would probably avoid the situation when we have another media library in Contrib. Um, so this is from Lightning Distribution. Uh, they are doing a lot of great job. Um, they are using all the modules that are in Contrib um, and building on top of them, providing some glue code. So this is one of the best places if you want to see how things currently work and what is possible to check with them. We have Lightning underscore media module that brings all the pieces together. Um, and a friend of mine, <laughs> this is kind of an anecdote, a friend of mine said uh, once that one of the Drupal media library solutions looked like Drupal with that mask that the evil character from Batman movie had. You know, like Drupal with that thing on the face. And uh, it's getting a little bit better, but it still sometimes look a little bit non-standard. Um, then, uh, another thing that we have is, sorry, no, wrong button. This will disappear. So, we have ability to have this nicer multi-upload, and this is not the only thing that we have. We can do like multi-step workflows in Contrib. Here we have the media library from file entity browser that we've seen earlier, and we selected a few images, and those images appear here below like an intermediary selection, and we can reorganize that, and then if, if we're not happy just with, with these assets here, we can up upload a few more uh, with using this multi-upload DropZone.js library, and they appear again, we can reorder them again, um, and then when we're, when we're happy with the selection, we can, we can uh, tell Drupal to, to send it back to the file field, um, which is a much nicer experience, in my opinion, than what we have in core currently. Um, then I showed you embedding for images. In Contrib, we have uh, another embed tool that builds on top of it that can embed any entity. In this case, we are embedding an image, but instead of being only to upload it, like we have, like the cases for core, we can uh, select it from a media library, from the same media library as you've seen in the previous video. Um, and you're not limited to images. You can also embed nodes or commerce products or some terms like everything that is an entity can be embedded. Um, so this is kind of, it's an improvement both in user experience perspective, because um, you can do like selection from the library, and it's also um, improvement from the functionality perspective, because uh, we can embed much more than just in core. Uh, then we also have cropping. Uh, these are two modules that implement cropping. This one is focal point, which has this little cross here, and you move that cross around, and you basically say this is the part of the image that has the most information, and then when crops are being generated, um, Drupal will make sure that that part of the image is always visible. Um, and then we have standard crop where we have rectangle and and we select the area that we want. So, we have a lot of things from this list. Um, we just don't have scaling and rotating images, but um, I think that this is more from the initial upload perspective, not from the um, perspective of image styles. Because right now, how cropping works, we just provide, save this information about the crop, the metadata, and then when image styles are generated, this is used to create correct crops for you. 
Um, some people would like to see something like uh, mini Photoshop when you upload the image and to be actually able to edit the original um, for whatever reason. Um, so these are probably two different use cases. Um, and yeah, so that second use case we don't solve yet. This, uh, this cropping information, is it saved per file or is it saved per, say, embed in the editor? Um, the question was, I need to repeat the question because of the recording. The question was if this cropping information is saved per file or per usage of this file, right? It's saved per file. Um, we were looking into options to be able to save it per usage. And actually saving it is not that hard. Uh, the problem is that image style system doesn't have the concept of the usage of the image. So you're, if you have a thumbnail image style, you can have only one thumbnail derivative for a given image. So it doesn't make much sense to store it. Um, and this is often, People often ask this question and require this feature, but this, in order to support this, we would need to improve or up, 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 update how image styles work. Um, so yeah, we have everything, uh, let's go home. We don't need anything. Um, fortunately, that's not the case. Uh, the first problem is that right now, it's quite hard to put everything together uh, there is a lot of m moving pieces involved, a lot of modules, um, and you need some knowledge to be able to decide which of them you need and how to put them together. Um, this per aspect is getting better as we get modules like media that are basically doing this for you or lightning distribution. Um, and like you can, you can either use something as lightning or media module to, to, prov to, to build this, or you can use it as example. You can study how that works and then figure out which pieces don't work for you and what do you need to change. Um, but the, we still have a lot of work to do in this area. The thing is that when, when we started working on that two years ago, we needed to build this underlying subsystems. And it took us some time to do that. And we needed to rewrite some parts a few times. Um, and just recently, maybe a few months ago, uh, we were ready to start building this solution modules on top of the, the whole underlying basis. And that's also the reason why Media Module was a Summer of Code project this year and not maybe last year. Last year, the pieces that Media depends on weren't ready. Um, then we have inconsistent user experience a lot of times. Like just think about the example of the, the Media Library. Uh, we're pretty early in the D8 life cycle and we can already have see three different, completely different so visual solutions in Contrib. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there are more that I'm not aware of. And uh, we will definitely see even more of them. Um, and this is something where, where Core could do a very important job to set the standard and um, tell Contrib how to behave, basically. Um, then we have some competing solutions. Um, which, like, it's much better than it used to be, but it's still a waste of resources, so it might be worth seeing if we can address that. Um, and the whole ecosystem, it's not visible for first-time evaluators. If somebody downloads Drupal Core, installs it, you don't get anything, any of those things that I showed for, for Contrib. Um, and for those people, that basically means Drupal can do that. Um, this fact is probably also a little bit mitigated by the fact that if you are a service provider and if you are demoing Drupal to, to a prospective client, you probably don't use core for that. You probably use something, either a distribution, something that you've built 
in-house or maybe rely on Lightning to do it. So I think that this problem is not so big for for clients that get in touch with service providers or with professional companies. Um, it's more a problem for somebody that, that does it on its own. Like this might be a student looking for a CMS to build a school newspaper website, or maybe a CEO of a huge corporation, or CTO, more probable probably. Um, and both are important, right? So, um, I guess the, I think that we need to improve the situation in core, if nothing else, for to, to improve Drupal's reputation in this area, but the question is how. And I will propose a few things that I think would make sense to do, and then we can discuss about that. So the first thing that I would do is would add support for remote media in core. Um, not necessarily supporting all different sorts of remote media, it would be, in my opinion, it would be enough to just have a similar experience that we have now with images and files, plus YouTube videos, for example, because this covers majority of cases. And um, yeah, it also shows, Drupal shows that it can do that, and it sets pathways for contrib to extend for with different, with to extend this with different um, types. Um, it would be very nice for this to be compatible with what we have currently in Contrib, because um, if we don't do it that way, then we left everyone behind. And, and this is the case, like for currently, it's possible to build Drupal, webs Drupal 8 websites in a few different ways when it comes to media, and we need to support, like, there are basically two ways how you can do it, and if we do something in core, we should make sure that all these implementations still work. Um, uh, yeah, so my, my suggestion, like, I think that it would make sense to consider including media entity, which is the, the remote, remote media solution in, in Contrib, in core. Um, it has quite a good adoption. It is maintained. It already has a lot of plugins uh, for a lot of video providers, for slides, for SoundCloud, for like quite a big number of different sources. Um, there is one problem, though. Uh, I think that this couldn't be an experimental thing, like like big pipe is, because uh, we're dealing with with the data. Like you can you can have an experimental module that that improves some UI part, and if if the way how you store your data in the database is is the same, this really doesn't matter. You just enable it or disable it, swap it for the new one or the older one, and everything still works for you. But if you change the, the way how data is stored, then I think it's not responsible to say that this is experimental. If we give people tools, uh, we need to make sure that, that they, their data is safe. Um, so this is a little bit of a disadvantage because it gives us less room to experiment. Um, and one way I think we could do it would be to, at some point, at some minor release, um, like for example, include Media Entity in Core, and then update the standard profile to start using it from that point on, and don't migrate the sites that were implemented before that, because I think that would create a lot of problems for people. And since all the pieces that that are in core that these sites are relying on are still there, stay there, are not going anywhere. These sites will continue working um, and all the contrib things that depend on that will continue to function. Um, and then maybe provide an optional upgrade path or m migration for this kind of sites 
in in Contrib or as an experimental module, I don't know, and then uh, make sure that everything is migrated correctly for D9. So I, I wouldn't force, if we would do a change like that, I wouldn't force all the existing website to adopt it. I would just do it for, for sites that are being installed from there on. Um, there is an issue for that. Uh, if you want to get involved, uh, check, check this URL. And I will tweet the slides and put them on the uh, session page on the conference website so you can get it from there. No need to take pictures with your phones. <laughs> um, then we have a media library. Um, assuming that we would do the first step, this basically becomes just a view of, of those media entities. Um, we have lots of examples if you can contrib, as we've seen. Um, we t take the best what is in there right now, improve the UX, add features, more advanced filters, and by doing that, we set standards in, in core, and then, for example, assuming that, that each item in this library is rendered as a full entity with a special view mode, for example, like, like a library view mode, then if you have modules in Contrib that provide support for other media types, these modules just need to provide same defaults for, for, for that view mode. Um, and then, theoretically, these media types that would be added later would nicely appear in the same library. And we got consistent, consistent uh, appearance. And since this is core, a lot more people see it. It is quite probably that the viewer's experience would be much better in the first place. Um, there is already an issue, and there is some discussion going on in terms of prototypes and mocks. The media library prototype that you've seen at Dries' keynote is from that issue. So if you are interested in these kind of things, uh, please check that, um, especially if you are like, interested in UX and design. Um, this is perfect time to get involved in there. Um, then, WYSIWYG embedding. Uh, the problem, if we do the first step, if we update the way how media is stored in core, uh, it means that by default they are not images anymore, which means that embedding of images kind of conflicts with that. Um, so we need something more powerful if we would be to do that. Um, and we already have this entity embed module in, in Contrib that allows you to embed any entity. Um, it comes with some dependencies uh, with quite powerful display configuration, a few plugin types. It's quite complex. But the basic underlying thing that, that is the meat of this module is basically the text filter that converts the embed tag into a rendered entity. And I think that we could move that into the core. And then we have support for embedding any entity in core. So we solve that problem. And we could make like a simpler feature set, maybe just allowing people to, um, to to select a view mode and then render the entity with the view mode instead of having ability to use field formatters and uh, custom plugins and a lot of other stuff like we have in Contrib because this is where a lot of complexity is. And if, if we do it in a way that, that allows us to extend this, we can still rely on Contrib of, on Entity Embed module to provide this advanced display configuration options um, while core could have the filter, which is the most important part, and simplified UI uh, to, to select entities and to embed them into WYSIWYG. Um, yes? I think a, a very important part of that is also to make it, to make it easy for the demo to, uh, to have absolutely full control of the 
markup. So, so I think even if you have a, a simple display configuration, uh, I think a simple theming uh, and, and codes and, and actually version control, uh, how uh, what you can do with the uh, config export. Uh, but 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 to, to give the themers uh, full control of how things are appearing inside the architect. Yeah, just to repeat, the comment was that it's important to allow teamers to have full control over rendering of this embedded thing, right? And I completely agree with you, of course. Um, yeah, there's an issue where hopefully discussion about this uh, will, will emerge. Um, then we have reusability problem. Um, reusability is mainly solved with Entity Browser module in Contrib right now. Uh, Entity Browser, it's fairly new concept. It was built for D8, and it's also fairly complex with a lot of plugins. Um, and I, I don't think it would be ready to be included in core at this point. Um, so, what I think would be the best way for now is uh, to create like simple listing that is based on, on the look and feel of, of that media library that we would hopefully have and allow people to, to use that to reuse things, um, but with a, a bit limited feature set, um, maybe just having uh, a list of, of media entities where you can pick something from would be enough, even without filters. It would be way better than what we have now. Um, and then either incrementally improve this in core or rely on um, Contrib to, to, to extend it for more, more complex use cases. And maybe see later, maybe for D9, if something like Entity Browser could end up in core. Um, so we would have more flexibility there. Um, and with this approach, we would cover most of these use cases in core itself. Maybe not with the full feature set, but um, like if we provide something basic for, for people that are evaluating Drupal, it's definitely way better than, than what we have now. Um, the only thing that we completely left out is cropping, um, which, yeah, we could discuss about, but uh, I think that this is already more than enough work for some time. Um, the another advantage of this um, proposal is that it heavily relies on stuff that is already in Contrib, so we're not re-implementing everything from scratch, but using things that exist already and just improve them um, and that saves us a lot of time and a lot of energy um, but we still need people mostly people and also money I think that it's um, not realistic to expect that a group of volunteers will <coughs> pop up and and do this um, because it's a huge job and people have lives. Um, one way we could do this, and this has been proven to be very successful in the past, is dedicated week-long week -long focused sprints. We've done this um, at MD Systems two times for just media itself. Um, we usually have uh, sprints like that in, at, in New York, at New York Camp. The latest example was a sprint that happened after this year's NICE Camp. Um, and we basically rented an Airbnb and were there for a week. And were sleeping there and eating in restaurants around the block. Um, and we were able, 
and at some point it was just two of us. We started with four people and then three people and then at the end we were just two. But we pushed forward things that were stuck in the issue queue for months. And if we would be able to do this with a little bit bigger group um, more often, then achieving these goals, I, I, I think it's, it's not that un unrealistic that it sounds. Um, it's nice to have sprints on events like this, because you can get new contributors, but it's extremely hard to focus. On events like DrupalCons, we had a lot of interesting discussions in the past, a lot of interesting decisions, but not much actual features came out of those sprints. Um, while on this focused sprints where we were isolated from all the uh, distractions, results were much better. Um, and in order to do that, we basically need some money, not much, to rent a place like that, to fly people there, and to provide some food. Um, and either ability to, I don't know, pay people to camp there, but even better if their employers would say, okay, this is our sponsorship towards the community, towards the initiative, I will send my senior developer X there for a, ma for a week and leave him out of the daily stuff as much as I can to be able to focus on this. And if we would do a few sprints like that per minor release cycle, I think we could move mountains. Question. Yeah, uh, the question was if that could be combined with any event. Sure, it can be, but from my experience, if it's part of the event, if it happens at the same time as the event is happening, there is so many interesting things going on at the same time that people won't be able to focus. Like in New York, we didn't do it at, on the actual days of the camp, but we did it afterwards. After the camp, for a week, we stayed there. and we were able to focus much, much more than we, we would be able as part of the camp. Do you think the pre and post sprints are Yeah, it's definitely better, but it's still a lot of people. It's pretty, it's very general event. Um, it's very easy to be pulled out of, of this and into something else where discussions are happening and stuff like that. So I think that if, if we can have something that is really focused, uh, it's much more productive. Uh, so, we are dedicated to help. As I already mentioned, we are striving, we're trying to invest roughly 20% of every project that, that we have back into the community. Um, and MD Systems has been one of the major supporters of, of the media initiative in the past. Um, and something like this would be happening. We're definitely part of it. Um, this is obligatory slide. Um, come to sprints. If you are a first time sprinter, that's the room you should be in. And you have mentored core sprint, uh, another room, and general sprints if you, if you know what you want to do. Or if you join us, uh, come to general sprints. You have to, you don't have to. We would uh, kindly ask you to evaluate this session, uh, all sessions actually that you attend, because um, this helps me and the conference organizers to be better next time. Um, and uh, now it's time for the conversation part of core conversation. Any comments, any ideas, thoughts? Yeah, can you, can you uh, go to the microphone, please? So what's the current state of things? What's done by that moment? Thanks. Um, do you, are you referring to core or Drupal? Ecosystem entirely. No, you mean, do you have your own uh, starting modules 
that you want to put in a core, or it's just based on the country module that currently have what it should want? I'm not sure if I understand the question. I mean, uh, do you have your own development already started on a thing? So, the question is if the development already started. Yes. Um, development has been going on in Contrib for two years now. And you have a lot of things in Contrib already. Some of them with stable releases, most of them with at least beta releases. Um, and all of these modules are already used on many sites. So this is not something completely new that is being invented right now, but it's rather like trying to improve that and move parts of the existing things into core where it makes sense and where it's possible. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Which part I didn't answer? Um, so you kind of go and lead on this, right? Your company. Um, I wouldn't say that. It's many companies have been part, and many individuals have been part of this initiative in the last few years. Um, we are one of them, of course, um, but uh, many people invested into this in the past, and it's not something that is like our thing that we want to promote into the community but it's something that has been going on in the community in a very open way for a long time now, um, and we've been part of it. Um, so first issue, you raised, doesn't have any comments, so I'm going to support remote media access and kind of cross link it. So is that something that we need to get like consensus and buy-in for and then cross link and approach, or like what's the plan for progressing that? Um, that issue was created recently. I think I created it last week. Uh, so the comment question was that that issue is a issue about remote media doesn't have any um, comments, um, and it was created based on missed my preparations for this conversation, and we have few more discussions planned for this week, and hopefully we will see what the ideas, conclusions about this are this week. Yes. So the question was if this what we're talking about here is support, it should work with the workflow, the, the, the tools that Workflow Initiative is working on and moving into core, or some pieces already are in the core. Um, and the example that you gave was the embedding. So if I understood correctly, if there could be problems if you embed something into WYSIWYG and then use the deploy module to de deploy this to some, some other instance. Um, we try to do everything to be as standard as possible. We have standard entity types and, for example, for embedding, we are not embedding the rendered version of, of the entity that's being embedded. We just store the reference in a special custom tag. And to store that reference, we use UUID. We don't use the entity ID. And the main reason for that was to support cases like that. Uh, disclaimer, I personally have never tried that. But in theory, it should work. I have tried it.
was the the day um, and, and they did support that. So uh, I haven't tried it with the most updated version of those two, uh, but I, I have successfully used those modules to deploy that, and it deploys not only the actual asset file that you need to render the XP, uh, but it, it it deploys that rendered code. So you know, as you explained, you're not just an entity, right? It's, con it's technically content that has a tag that gets replaced. So the big deal was, you know, making sure you've got the file over uh, in the right place. So deploy resolves all those dependencies, and uh, and it, it didn't initially work, but we worked on that and got that fixed. So uh, now whether that will go into the core part of the workflow, I'm not sure because that was a contrib module supporting another contrib module. So. If it's not in core, it can't be moved into core. So it, it's a chance that you'll probably still have to use some of the contrib stuff within the workflow. But a long answer, yes, it works. Yeah, the answer from the audience was that it yeah, basically works. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the question is about file revisioning yeah. and if that is the scope. Um, I think that it is a scope. Um, I believe that revisions in media entity should work. Um, and I'm not sure what the state is in file entity now. With file entity, which is a module in Contrib that extends core files, it doesn't work. And the main issue, as far as I understand, is that, yes, if, if you have a file as a full featured entity with fields and everything, it's easy to revision fields. But how do you revision file itself? Do we store multiple copies of this file on the disk or... Um, yes. Um, so the main issue is how to solve this revisioning of the file itself. Um, and I don't have answer to that, sorry. <laughs> Um, the answer from the audience, uh, Core has a new critical ish, critical bug, is this, I guess, since yesterday. Um, exactly for because of this problem where files can be deleted where we don't want them to be deleted. And we will stop deleting files when they are unused by default, while still allowing people to enable that if they need it. Um, the question was that it seems, the, the comment and the question was that it seems that the biggest pain in the butt is uh, the part where we transition from files to media entities. And the question was if, if media entities are built on top of file entities. The answer is basically yes, because for local media, media entity like has a file field on it and this is how it it references the 
the file, how it brings the file into the media entity. It's not depending on file entity because it doesn't need it to do that. It just needs what is in core. Um, but yeah, that's why I also said that all the pieces that are currently in core are not conflicting and should stay in core if we end up doing that. And for, for remote media, it's uh, doing it in a completely different way entirely. Mostly by referencing links to, by, by storing links or embed codes to that remote media and have some logic to be able to parse that and to identify, uh, sorry, correct IDs, at, and et cetera. question is um, what we do with current UIs in core if we do that. Um, you cannot use current field types with the media entity because image field and file field are limited just to files, so you need to use something else, which probably the answer is um, entity reference. Um, and uh, I would say, like, my initial idea is to to create a, a different widget for entity reference with possibly similar user experience to the one that we have now. Um, so this would hide the complexity significantly while still relying on this new thing for the underlying part. That could be one solution. Because, sorry, because at the end of the day, no matter if you have a file or a media entity, when you upload files, it's just uploading the file and creating an entity out of it. We're also doing this now. Uh, file is an entity in core already, so it's not that important what kind of entity. Uh, who was first? Back there was first, <laughs> sorry. Um, so the question was if I could talk about how to avoid the same problems that media module had in seven, which is trying to do too much uh, in in one bag. Um, and the answer is that we. This is the first problem that we are trying to address. Like two years ago, where we had this initial discussions about how this ecosystem will look for D8. Um, and our solution to that was, instead of having one huge module um, that does everything, to separate into smaller pieces that live independently in Contrib, and then a module like Media depends on them and provides default configuration. And that's what is basically happening right now. This approach introduced a new problem that is like, a lot of hidden things, a lot of knowledge that you need to be actually able to build things. But I think if we provide same defaults, nice default modules that, that, that build things for you, um, then we've solved this problem. And another problem that media had in D7 was the fact that it was unstable for basically the entire cycle. Yeah. And at least for this, Underlying basic parts in Contrib, we don't have any problem because all of them except Entity Browser are already beta, which means everything should be backward compatible. And even with Entity Browser, there are no changes planned that would break backward compatibility. It's just more the fact that there are some quite complex bugs and we would like to fix them before we dedicate to that. Uh, there were a few more questions, but I think that our time is up. Um, but I'm happy to continue chatting in front of the room. Thank you everyone for coming and hopefully we'll see this.